All right, good evening and welcome to this eighth edition of our Frogan's Technology Conference. And thank you for attending this meeting either here in Telecom Paris Tech, excusez moi. Telecom Paris Tech à Paris et euh, in Paris, ou les personnes qui nous suivent via online, le streaming via site conférence the conference.frogans.org site. You can follow us either in French or in English. Grâce Thanks to two interpreters. I want to say hi to the interpreters. So the conference will be available both in French and English. As as, now, if some of you have worked with us, have followed us, you must know what the Frogans project is about. Now, if you're new, if you're a newcomer, if you just joined us on this journey, maybe this word will sound awkward. What's the Frogans project? Well, it's the introduction of a new software layer on the internet. It's going to be the Frogans layer via the use of a new communication means, a new means to uh, publish things on the internet, and these will be the Frogans sites. Now, what are the Frogans sites? Well, that's very simple, and if you've been Vous avez déjà following us for quite a few conferences, you've probably seen them, you've probably tested them, navigated on those sites, but for those of you who are not familiar with Frogan's sites, allow me this very short demo. So, I need my screen. What do you see on this screen? If you see just like me, you have this desktop on a computer, that's a Linux computer, by the way, and you see this window that I'm going to leave here because that's all the presentations that are going to be made by my colleagues. And this is Frogan's player. So I'm moving it on the screen, there you go. It can go on top of the window. No problem. And that's Frogan's player. What's a Frogan's player? That's the piece of software you use to navigate on Frogan's site on the internet. So, how do you access a Frogan's site? Very easy. From a desktop, and we'll talk about mobile devices afterwards because I guess you're all wondering whether it works on your mobile phone or on your tablet and the answer is obviously yes it does. So I clicked on this Frogan player and I have this context menu. It's a scroll down menu and if you're not familiar with the project this Frogan player I'm showing is available. You can download it. It's available from get.frogans but it's a developer's version, so it explains why the interface is not very sexy. Now, if I show you the scroll down menu, you see dev, dev, meaning in development, or web, web, sorry. But I'm going to show you menus for developers, so of course this is not yet the version for the public at large. So, <clears throat> I said open a Frogan site, and now I'm going to enter a Frogan's address. What's a Frogan's address? Well, it's just the identification information to access the Frogan site. There are different type of addresses. You have public network Frogan's addresses and dedicated network Frogan, uh, Frogan's addresses. The difference being that the being linked to the network. Public networks all start with Frogan's dans les dix systèmes d'écriture, les dix catégories. The word Frogan's, but written in one of the ten language categories that are used throughout the world. And the other networks, or whatever you want, all you need to do is to register your network with the operator, and you can customize your Frogan's address. Then, you have the asterisk, 
On va retrouver which you get after the network name and before the site name. Then the site name you call it whatever you want. And here to pay tribute to the posters that we've uh, displayed everywhere. I'm going to write sky skydive tour. Click. And here it is. My goodness, there is a disclaimer saying that a certain number of things, that this is a demo Frogan side, that it's not totally functional. And watch out, if you're using Frogan's players for developers, you may, your, the system might be a bit slow. Okay, let's get to that. So this is a Frogan site. Like my button before, I can move it around. It's not really square. This is one of its features. You have this shadow that seems to be transparent. I'm not going to go into details about the description, but what you can see is that, um, well, it's full of new graphic or in innovative graphic functionalities. And there are buttons. So I click and I move to new slides. And I see that when I arrive to the edge, I can resize it. It is resized through the center. And it changes shape and content when I have it as a vignette, as opposed to the lead representation, which you have here. So, that's all I wanted to say about Frogan's site. And obviously, you can open other Frogan's site on your screen. So, Frogan Star. I can't remember all my Frogan's addresses by heart, but uh, somebody is going to come up and explain that all you can need to do, in, all you will need to do in the future, is to click on a link. So this is another one, that's a demo, and it's not square at all, you see. That's a shoe that we already showed. It can change color. And there is also the vignette. Sorry, if I get close to the, the edge. Okay, let me show you what you need to do. You just click on it and say, small size. And it went to the vignette mode. And you just get the word sneakers. So I just wanted to show you that this is a developer's version. It's not yet what will be available for the uh, public at large. So these were the Frogan's site, uh, Frogan's addresses. That's the visible part of the iceberg. But during our conference today, we are going to discover many different parts of the Frogan's project. And we are going to explore what's going to happen during this uh, transition face. So Amaury Grimbert is going to come on stage and tell us what OP3FT is about. OP3FT is the non-profit organization developing the Frogan's te uh, technology. Amaury will tell us about uh, the organization missions and work. Alexis Taban, who is co-designer along with Amory, co-designer of the Frogan's technology. He will tell us what happened during the introduction phase of the Frogan's technology, what's going on now, and what will actually be implemented as we switch to this dissemination phase on the internet. Then we'll have our teams, our working teams, working with OP3FT, and they will take this case and show how dissemination has an impact on their work, what kind of components they need to develop, finalize, what will be available to users. We will talk about FSDL, which is the language you use to develop Frogan sites. We will talk about Frogan's player, 
And once again, this is not yet the uh, public version, and we'll explain what we are currently doing to move forward and get there, get to this uh, public version. Then we'll talk about the uh, central database for Frogan's addresses, because if you want to get a Frogan's address, if we could show that of on the screen, if we could show that of the site. Come on, please, guys, up there. Can we switch screens? No, it was Frogan Star. It was an address. It needs to be registered. So I'll introduce some colleagues, and they will explain what this means. Then we'll talk about public consultation. Public consultation is a very important procedure for OP3FT because being a non-profit organization, we are an open organization. So public consultation makes it possible for users to tell us their position with regards to decisions made by OP3FT with regards to the development of Frogan's technologies. And of course, we'll talk about international development because Frogan's address can be written in more than 170 languages. And Frogan's has an international scope. And OP3FT is working and needs to set up locally. And we'll take the specific case of China, which is a significant country uh, in which we want to develop. As from there, w you will have understood everything. And from introduction to dissemination or spreading, and Alexei Tamas will be back with us to tell us about the next steps, because uh, dissemination, spreading is not one shot. It's something that we need and continue working on for this spreading to occur. And we want to show to you that OP3FT already envisages the future development of Frogan's technology over the next three and five years. And then OP3FT We'll leave the floor because we'll talk about the consequences of the emergence of Frogan's technology on the internet. And my colleagues will come on stage to tell you about what will happen. We'll see an increasing number of Frogan sites on our screens with an increasing number of devices, of platforms, of services, an increasing number of tools to help people design web uh, frogan sites um, easily and then addressing and hosting services so that frogan's site as these are internet based sites they need to be hosted on servers and they will be using specific service providers whose work consists in administering the hosting of your frogan site and take care of its uh, registration and address renewal. So that's the end of my introduction, just to say that these are the things that you will see on your screens, on your computers, in ads. I guess there will be an increasing number for Frogan's addresses, but that's just a visible part of the iceberg. And I'd like to finish this introduction by saying that the visible part it's not the bulk of the work. The bulk of the work when you're talking about adopting a new technology like uh, the Frogan's technology, the bulk of the work is what is done on a daily basis by developers in their companies, in their meeting rooms, in their garage, who knows, or in their bedrooms when they're going to develop Frogan's sites, whether personal or professional Frogan's sites for business, then we'll have negotiation between customers and service providers. This is what will make the f make it possible for the Frogan's technology to disseminate. So as you're part of the internet ecosystem, I hope you will be convinced that OP3FT 
makes it possible for you to innovate thanks to Frogan's sites and Frogan's technology. I thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a very pleasant evening and we're now moving to our first presentation. Uh, during this transition phase that we are talking about today, I'd like to show you a Frogan site because, as I said before, those Frogan sites will be available on your computer and on your mobile, mobile device. And, you know, as I was a bit stressed when I started talking and I forgot to show you a few things. So, I'm going to show you the Frogan's site, the same as the ones I showed you on the computer, but this time on my iPhone. So, can you see my iPhone on the screen? Okay, that's perfect. So, you maybe you don't remember... Uh, the Frogan site I showed. So it's uh, an Apple mobile phone. So here you have this Fro Frogan's player application. Don't try and download it at the moment. This version is a, develop a developer's version and it's meant for internal tests purposes only. Uh, upcoming a Frogan's player which will be available for iOS, Android and other mobile open systems. So this, what, what I'm going to demonstrate will probably be modified especially with regards to the interface and we will most probably enrich the experience. But you will see or you will get all I'm going to show you. So, this is a sad looking screen. We have some, we decided we'd have something very neutral. And I see this icon. It will remind you of the asterisks that we have in the Frogan's address. So that, when I click, I get enter a Frogan's address. Once again, I have to enter an address. And just to prove that I'm not in the public version, and this is not even a, down, a, a, a version you can download, I'm going to enter a test address that starts with test star or test asterisk. That's a perfect way for developers to create uh, Frogan sites for free and then test them on their different devices. If you want more information about test star address addresses, you can uh, look at um, the Frogan's site, uh, get Frogan's site, or you can look at the videos from our previous conferences. It was conference number six and number seven, where we talked about how you can use a test address. So I'm going to type in a test address, which is different from the one reg registered with the FCR. So test, asterisk, and sneakers. So it's test, asterisk, sneakers. And here is our shoe. Here is our sneaker that we saw earlier on. You have the Frogan's address. I'm so sorry, it took me a bit of time to type in the address. I'm not manipulating the phone. Look at my hand. Well, I'm going to do that anyway, just to show you. So, you see here, you have what we call a pad. And as Amory was saying, we want to have a consistent navigation experience between a mobile device and a pointing system. There is no mouse on a mobile phone. And if I wanted to 
use the site. My finger is not very big, but still, it would be difficult. So we need to find a way. At, at the moment, we're using the pad. So what is the pad doing? It helps moving right to left. I'm activating, deactivating, and I just press, and it's just as if you were clicking. Or you have another one here. The Frogan's side can also be redimensioned from the center on a mobile device. And you can also open different Frogan's site on your mobile device. You still have it on your screen. And I'm going to open another one just to show you how you can navigate from one site to the other. So just bear with me for half an hour. It's about the time it takes me to type in the address. Test étoile skydive qui correspond à notre frogan. So test star skydive like the one we had before. So you see that I can navigate using the pad as before. I can, starting from the center, I can size it up or down. And look at it. I can come back to my sneaker that I had before, which is still there. And if I have them in small size, they're there on my interface where I can customize my Frogan's stage, as it's called by developers at the moment. So, the interest is that you can do that with just one thumb. It's much easier when I don't have to touch every single word with my thumb. Um, you see, sizing down, very easy, just with the thumb. And I navigate. If I want to have it blue, I want a blue sneaker. There it is. So, if I forgot to say something about mobile phone, I'll come back. But you see, it took me a bit of time to type in my Frogan's address first because I'm not used to the keyboard on this terminal or on this device. But also because when you type, you need to remember the address you want to type in. But we'll have short links to open Frogan's site under certain conditions that we will describe later and I exit like I exit any other application. Okay, thank you very much indeed. We can go back to our main screen. Okay, you see my Frogan site, they're still here. They coexist with a presentation about uh, OP3FT's bylaws. They're just the same. You see that it's transparent here. You can see through and I didn't talk about developers' functionalities. So even if you're not a developer, you'll understand. There is this uh, functionality called Disable Scaling Factor. -moi, je suis mes, mes collègues My technician colleagues are going to correct me, but it allows to have this in real size. There was no real change here because um, in in a kind of a large screen environment. So the letters are large, and my Frogan site considers that at this size, I'll be able to see the test and navigate. But for high density screen, when you untick this option, you can see the Frogan site in the size as rendered in Frogus, Frogan's player in a specific canvas. So that's important for graphic designers who want to see every individual pixel in their Frogan site. There is another app for developers, which is ViewSource. 
And this is what a Frogan's site is about. It's just a few code lines written with the FSDL language. So I'm not going to go into details here. But you see here there are comments. It's traditional XML. You have 100 lines for this slide. Do you want me to enlarge it? OK. So all this is available in Frogan's player. And if I have no imagination whatsoever, I cut and paste the template. That's how you do it on the web, no secret. You can access the source code for each Frogan slide. And if I come back to this slide and I ask view source, it's updated and it says, OK, here is the code for the active slide. It's all described in FSDL and in less than 100 lines because you have lots of comments here. But with less than 100 lines, you can write a Frogan's site, if you are a developer, I mean. OK, so that was... A short interruption. I've showed. I've shown that a Frogan site is not just a succession of pictures, which are assembled by a graphic designer. A Frogan site can be dynamic, and adapt to the user's experience and adapt to what the visitor is doing during his or her interactions. Okay. Thank you.